The Los Angeles Lakers kick off the 2024 NBA season on the right foot, taking down prior year's Western Conference finalists, the Minnesota Timberwolves, and now fans of the purple and gold can't help but to gush over this team's regular season debut despite basically being pretty much the exact same team from last season. It makes it all the more impressive how following such a disappointing offseason where not a single worthwhile free agent or trade chip was acquired that just the addition of JJ Redick as the Lakers' new head coach has reinvigorated the fan base and potentially completely changed the trajectory of what was thought to be yet another underwhelming season. The headlines following the Lakers' first victory of the season read something along the lines of Anthony Davis making a statement for his own case against reigning Defensive Player of the Year, LeBron James and Bronny making history, JJ Redick truly being a basketball maniac for all the right reasons, and many more storylines were following, but at the same time, let's take a moment to give credit to a player coming off a strong summer while participating in Olympic basketball and has only continued his impressive play against the Timberwolves, that being Roy Hachimura. Hachimura actually led the team in plus minus at plus 19, and his performance was crucial on a night where LeBron James looked sluggish and a step slow on both ends of the floor. This uber aggressive version of Roy Hachimura was a rare sight to see under Darvin Ham's coaching staff, and needless to say, if Hachimura were to continue taking the next steps towards becoming a two way star many scouts thought he'd one day be, the Lakers' championship window might not be as close as the basketball world thought it'd be. So that's exactly what we're going to discuss in today's video why Roy Hachimura, under the guidance of JJ Reddick's coaching staff, is bound to find plenty of success and opportunities to showcase he indeed is a two way star we thought he'd one day be and ultimately will be making the case as to why Roy Hachimura is the team's most important X-Factor outside LeBron James and Anthony Davis this season. But first let me know down in the comment section below, who do you believe is the Lakers most important X-Factor outside LeBron James and Anthony Davis? For the longest time, Laker fans have been internally debating as to who should be starting at the other forward position between Roy Hachimura and Jared Vanderbilt, and recently the answer has become pretty clear. It was always a matter of what would happen first. Would Vanderbilt, the defensive specialist, develop a long-range game, or would Roy Hachimura, the skilled offensive weapon, improve as a versatile defender? Fast forward to two years later of having both young forwards wearing purple and gold, and the clear answer has now become undeniable. Jared Vanderbilt's inconsistent availability aside, he's frankly way behind compared to Roy Hachimura in becoming a versatile two-way contributor for his team. In the Lakers' regular season debut, Hachimura's hot start on both ends of the floor and how he immediately showcased his complete skill set by effectively spacing the floor from beyond the arc, taking undersized opponents straight to the basket, putting the ball on the floor for the mid-range shot, all while altering a couple of shots and passes from varying positions is exactly what JJ Redick needs to see from Hachimura daily, and the good news is that he's more than equipped to do that. It's no secret that Darvin Ham was not familiar with Hachimura's game, given how once the Lakers landed Hachimura a few seasons back, Hachimura barely saw playing time until Russell Westbrook was traded to the Utah Jazz which shook up the rotation and even going back to just last season, Hachimura saw him losing a starting job to names like Touring Prince and Cam Reddish. It's frustrating to think what stage of his development Hachimura would have currently been at should he have been given a consistent role from the start. Even in times of uncertainty though, Hachimura still managed to make the most of his opportunities under the dark ages of Darvin Ham. Given how Hachimura was able to put up a career high in points, shoot 42% from beyond the arc on a career high attempts of 3.5 per game, and he managed to keep his turnovers low, all while fluctuating as a starter and coming off the bench last season. New head coach JJ Redick, on the other hand, appears to be much more decisive and knows what his players are capable of and how to position his players to get the most out of them. With that said, in addition to the question at the start of the video regarding who is the Lakers' most important X Factor outside of LeBron James and Anthony Davis, also be sure to let me know down in the comment section below which Laker benefits the most from JJ Redick being the new head coach. That's it for the video, take it easy guys. Hey Rui, JJ mentioned a couple things like the, the turnover difference uh, from, uh, I think Minnesota had forced the fewest last year was eight, you guys only had seven, uh, the offensive rebounds uh, and then just the team defense. Uh, how did you feel like you executed on, on what were clearly part of the game plan? Yeah, I think uh, tonight we did what we're supposed to do and I think right before the game we talked about it too. Uh, JJ told, told us that, you know, if you do what we're supposed to do, we're going to win this game. So. Yeah, we are more focused on us, you know. We focus on us and our basketball, our system, our, you know, what we want to do, and yeah, that's why we got this win. So it was good. 
Now, Rui, you, a lot of your offense came early, kind of taking advantage of their coverages, and I uh, wondered how, what you saw there. And then uh, as Anthony Davis kind of kept going and kept going and found his rhythm to get to 36, what did you make of his game overall? Yeah, for me, I was just trying to be more aggressive. You know, I think uh, we talk about uh, Julius, Julius Land, uh, Randall. He, he, he sometimes, he's just, uh, um, just standing and stuff. So we talk about we got to kind of use that. Uh, I know I can be the screener. You know, I can be the, you know, uh, corner to kind of you know attack the rim and stuff. So yeah, I think uh, we did that. And AD, of course, AD is uh, you know um, he 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 was being aggressive. He was so aggressive, you know, offensively, defensively, everything. He did it. So yeah, it was good. Rui, how would you evaluate kind of? You said you your goal was to be more aggressive um, out the gate. How would you evaluate kind of your performance tonight and, and how you want to expound on upon that as the the season goes on? Yeah, just um, uh, me and as uh, coaches being talk about you know my. You know, just uh, offense, uh, offense, be just, you know, been doing, uh, I think uh, they want me to do like whatever I've been doing, you know, and, but defense, Bree, you know, they want me to vote, they, they want me to more, uh, be more aggressive on the uh, rebounds and stuff. So I think that's the key for me, you know, because uh, once, if I get the rebounds, I can push the balls and all that. So I think I can get in the rhythm. So, and the crash in the offense rebound too. That's, that's going to be the, my next step. And I think I want to keep doing that. Uh, Rui, first off, I like the humble responses, but you were being aggressive at that rim too as well. You got two dunk ons too as well, and then um, talk about like how how it's been for you with JJ. Offense looked a lot different. Ball was moving. You know, D'Lo being unselfish too as well. A lot more extra passes. Just talk about those two things. Yeah, that, I think that's what we've been working on. You know, I think our systems can, uh, is a, what we can kind of bring our strengths. You know, each each players. Especially now, with this starting five, you know, we can literally everybody can score, you know, from any time. So, I think we're using that, and JJ has been doing uh, those, you know, uh, plays that we can kind of, you know, play for each other, and I think it's been working. So, I think yeah, we gotta keep doing that. Last one. Oh no. Uh, Rui, the game was kind of close until that second quarter where things opened up. In your opinion, what caused that shift in the game for the Lakers to take over in that second quarter? Uh, I think defense. It was defense. I think we are more locked in on the defense, um, especially Anthony Edwards. You know, he was a, he was the ice on the ball. But I think we are in a shift. We are trying to help each other, and yeah, we got the de uh, we got a defense rebounds, and yeah, we're just like running around. You know, I think that was a good. And our first break was, yeah, amazing too. So yeah, I think that that was the key. Thank you. I wish. <laughs> JJ, I wanted to start with just the game that Anthony Davis had on both ends and how that kind of anchored what you're able to do and what you were trying to run on offense and defense. I mean, AD was phenomenal tonight. Felt like he attacked the game the right way. He was patient. Um, there were times, and I've said this, like we're trying to look for throwaheads after misses and makes and there's times he's just going to be trailing the play and we're attacking early and he may go three or four possessions without getting it and that doesn't mean he we call play for him and he forces a shot he doesn't you know he just plays the game the right way 